If somebody tries to, you know, with BTS, if somebody tries to talk about how they all look the same, let's talk about how they don't. Let's talk about how they don't look the same. Let's talk about how if you look at people, they look like different people. It's it's fascinating concept. And how beautiful, they each have very different beautiful features. Let's talk about the fact that they're human. Because when we let people, when we talk about people, or we let people talk about Asians, with that with that high pitched voice and the squinty eyes and the broken English, when we, when we do that or we allow people to do that, we are further perpetuating that they are other, that they are foreign, that they are not like us, that they are somehow more a part of China virus and Kung flu than they are a part of us. We have neighbors that are scared right now. You have people in your town that are scared right now and they have reason to be. Because walking to the mailbox, getting out of their car to walk into a store or going to work is enough for them to be targeted. Hi, I'm Ashley Sue. I normally do videos on BTS, midlife and mental health. Today we're going to talk more about Stop Asian Hate and Black Lives Matter. Being a white woman and talking about Black Lives Matter, talking about Stop Asian Hate, makes me nervous. I feel butterflies in my stomach and not the good kind that I get by listening to BTS and watching their videos. I get uh, an incredibly uneasy feeling. It's uncomfortable knowing what's going on in the world. It is uncomfortable knowing that I feel helpless about it. It is uncomfortable feeling like I need to say something, but afraid I'm gonna say the wrong thing, or maybe I don't have a place in talking about this at all. Except it feels like we all have a part in talking about hate against minorities and how to end that. I made a video last year that I thought was important at the time. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, it it's not good. It's, it's boring. It's too long. It's about how white people need to be talking to white people about the racism that very clearly does exist in our lives. We like to say that it isn't, that it's dying, that our society and our culture have come so far. We like to say that our family and our friends aren't racist, but the reality is that frequently we are, whether or not we are the ones, whether or not you're the ones spreading it, Chances are you are hearing comments directed about people or at people. And these are usually directed about black people, Asian people, or brown people, such as Indians and Middle Easterners. We're leaving it to the people who are targets to do the speaking. And the only people who are going to listen to them are the people who already want to listen to them. If I have a neighbor who is racist and doesn't like black people, he's not going to seek hearing black people talk about what it's like to be in America and be targeted by racism because he's already discredited them. When I heard about the shootings that happened in Atlanta targeting Asian women, targeting Asian women. I allow myself for a few days to completely overlook that and think that's really sad and kind of move on. And then I realized the only reason I had that luxury to choose not to look more into it, to not think about it more is because I am white and I live enough affluence that I have a sheltered life for the most part. And that's shitty that I can turn off my mind to what's happening simply because it's convenient for me to. If you are Asian American, possibly if you are Asian anywhere right now outside of Asia, you do not have the luxury to avoid thinking about hate crimes and avoid thinking about being targeted. If you are a black American, if you are a black American man, if you are a black American woman who is particularly raising a black American man, 
you do not have the luxury of tuning this stuff out. As I started looking into what happened in Atlanta and started processing my own feelings about what happened in Atlanta and how that is not specific to Atlanta, it's what's happening everywhere. It, it, it conjured all these things that I constantly try not to think about, try not to think or feel regarding what's going on in our culture, about human nature, about racism, about how we need to have conversations on legalizing sex workers, on accountability, on how white perpetrators are treated with kid gloves about having a bad day. <laughs> and then the circle just spins. The anxiety and thinking about racism, misogyny, violence. At what point do we get the circle to stop spinning? At what point do we have these conversations? The Atlanta shooter has the nerve to say that his crime was not racially motivated, but instead that he fancies himself a Dexter, that he's trying to protect other men like himself from the Asian women that he fetishized to the point of hating them and murdering them. Are those the exact words he used? No. That is exactly what he said. He felt the need to protect other men who supposedly can't control their urges from Asian women. And then the cop had the audacity to say that the kid was just at the end of his rope and having a really bad day. And that that's why that happened. But for those of us who don't hate Asian people and want to help the movement somehow and don't know how to, because I don't know how to, I don't, I don't have answers, but we have to do something, right? So here are my first thoughts on this. One, we have to listen to Asians who are talking about the experiences that they've had with discrimination here in America. Asian Americans and their experiences of harassment, of hate, of discrimination, of blatant racism, and passive aggressive racism, they are constantly dismissed. They are invalidated for their experiences. They are told, stuff it down. Why is it okay in our culture for us to expect Asians just to take it? Is it because they are considered overachievers? Is it because we think, well, you're successful, you do well, you're from countries that do well? Is it because we see them as stoic and unbothered? because they're humans, they're people just like the rest of us. So why, why would, that, why would these comments and jokes be okay? Any Asian American who shares their fears and frustrations from what's going on or anything they've ever experienced, they're incredibly brave. We need to listen to them. We need to process what they're saying. This week, Sujin Pak from MTV has talked about being verbally assaulted by an MTV executive who happened to be a white male and what he referred to her in a room full of other professionals is of looking like a cheap, sucky, sucky whore. That resulted in her anxiety, her depression. She had to fight back. She had to, it, it was a months long battle with MTV with executives who were asking, begging her to let them pay her off just to hush, just to hush. And they pleaded with her and put his job in her hands. They told her that his livelihood and him taking care of his family was all dependent on her. That if she didn't just take the payoff, that she was going to damage his life and career. He referred to her in a room full of other people, it doesn't even matter who he referred to her as that in front of, but a room full of other professionals as looking like one of those cheap, sucky, sucky, love you long time whores. He chose to do that. And yet the staff of MTV tried to make her feel guilty for his career being jeopardized. How is she responsible for what he did? 
How is she responsible for him trying to make her look and feel and seem this small? How did he become the victim in that situation? Second, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Let's stop supporting politicians who say things like China virus and Kung flu. Let's just stop doing that. That's important. As an Asian American or any minority, how can you feel good in a country that elects someone who goes on public rants thinking that's cute and funny to make comments like that? Third, and this one is awkward AF to do, call out your friends, your family, celebrities. When you're talking to a family member or a friend who is recounting an interaction they have with an Asian person and they're doing it and that, that mocking impersonation of an Asian person voice, you know what I'm talking about. The tight smile, the little squinty eyes, the high pitched voice, the broken English. And they think they're being really funny and cute. Call them out. It's awkward. Just tell them that's not cool. That, 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 that's not, that's not okay. That's not okay. It's not okay to do that. When you do that, you are simply mocking someone purely for their ethnicity and their DNA and nothing else. Pay attention to how family and friends frame a situation. You know, when, uh, when Chanel Miller was raped on her campus, her perpetrator was constantly being framed as a star student model athlete that, oh my goodness, his, his entire future was, was destroyed. What about hers? What about hers? Why was he framed in this light? Um, on the other hand, Trayvon Martin, a child who was hunted, a child who was hunted and slain was framed as somebody who was being belligerent and asked for it. The guy who hunted Trayvon Martin followed him for a long time, called the police repeatedly, admitted he was hunting this child, was told to back down and he didn't. He kept antagonizing this child. And somehow, supposedly, this child attacked him there in the last minutes of it, and it ended up in this child's death. And Trayvon Martin got framed as being the kid who started a fight. I've heard people say that Trayvon Martin caused his own death. Well, we have to be careful how we frame the perpetrator and how we frame the victims of these crimes. We also have to be careful not to talk about these cultures as if they are victims because they're people. Um, it's not about pity, it's about humanity. Talk about people the way you would talk about your sister. And if you hear someone say something stupid, racist, even innocuously racist, correct them in the same way you would correct somebody if they said something stupid about your sister. Fourth, I really want us to work on putting spotlights on Asians, positive spotlights. It's not just about ending the negative talk, which is hella important in our own circles, but we also need to um, positively portray and make sure that, that because <laughs> if you're here because you like BTS, I know you experienced this before, when you start telling people about BTS, you hear some pretty dumb things come out of people's mouths about how they all look the same and how, why do all Asian men look like girls? And you, you'll hear stupid stuff. And it's, it, it's surprising from people who you didn't expect to hear stuff like that from. And you kind of have to check yourself and think of how to make it, make it positive. Don't, you don't even just call it out as, wow, that was crummy, but make it positive. What is wrong? with men looking hot? What is wrong with Asian men taking care of themselves and looking good? What's wrong with that? If somebody tries to, you know, with BTS, if somebody tries to talk about how they all look the same, let's talk about how they don't. Let's talk about how they don't look the same. Let's talk about how if you look at people, they look like different people. It's it's fascinating concept. And how beautiful, they each have very different beautiful features. Let's talk about the fact that they are human. Because when we let people, when we talk about people, or we let people talk about Asians with that 
with that high-pitched voice and the squinty eyes and the broken English, when we, when we do that or we allow people to do that, we are further perpetuating that they are other, that they are foreign, that they are not like us, that they are somehow more a part of China virus and Kung flu than they are a part of us. We have neighbors that are scared right now. You have people in your town that are scared right now and they have reason to be. Because walking to the mailbox, getting out of their car to walk into a store or going to work is enough for them to be targeted. And I get that violence happens to anyone anywhere. I get that I could, could, it's possible that if I go for a walk around my neighborhood, it's possible that somebody could come after me simply for being a white woman. But the odds of that are like, boop, less than that much. I don't have to worry about my whiteness. I, I, I can walk around without being afraid. I have neighbors that I can't say feel the same way. That's my Asian neighbors and my black neighbors. Lastly, I wanna say if you're still here, support your local Asian businesses. Support your local Asian owned restaurants and grocers. And you know what? If you haven't tried Asian food, give it a shot. Try the Korean restaurant, Korean barbecue rocks. Um, try the Thai food, try, look up some reviews, try places, because these restaurants are hurting too during COVID, but they're hurting even more so because they're Asian owned. And no, this is not charity. This isn't uh, affirmative action. You know, we're gonna, we gotta support some local businesses anyhow, right? So why not try something new and help share that, that positive spotlight. You know, you might find something you love. Try some new foods and spread that positive, positive vibe in your community. Leave a good review for places that you like. Um, I, I know that seems like such a small way to combat racism, but sometimes we don't know what to do, but sitting around and asking Asian people to do it for themselves sucks sitting around asking black Americans to do all of it for themselves sucks because we, we're all, you know, we're all in this together, right? We're supposed to be in this together. To finish this video, I'm going to say the names of the eight victims and the survivor who was shot. I am not going to say the shooter's name because he does not deserve it. But the victims do because hashtag say her name, hashtag say his name, that needs to continue. Let's keep saying their names. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor. Now let's add eight names to this. Hyun Chan Grant, Xiao J. Tan, Young A. Yu, Dao Yo Fang, Soon Chang Pak, Soon Cha Kim, Delana Ashley Yong, Paul Andre Michaels, and the survivor who is still in the hospital, hopefully coming out of critical condition. Elsius Hernandez Ortez. These nine people were shot, eight of them killed, because the, the targets were Asian women. Period. This is not the only Asian hate crime that has happened in America, far from it ever. And in the last year, it's terrifying. The uptick that that has happened, the Black Lives Matter protests are not enough. The Stop Asian Hate protests are not enough. This has to be part of something we do every single day. This has to be something that we're willing to talk about and call out 
and work on every single day. Not just now while it's trendy. Always. I really wanted this to be shorter and more lighthearted than it is, so share your thoughts in the bottom unless you're a white supremacist, whether or not that's what you want to acknowledge yourself as. If you're going to defend white supremacy, then you are. You never walk alone, any of you. God bless you. God loves you.